In this podcast, I would like to analyse the James McPeak era. Overall, I think James McPeak was a bad manager, but you have to give him credit too. Uh, First of all, he was a very good player for the club. I mean, some of his performances were amazing. And I would consider him a club servant, because even after he retired, he was a coach for a few years. And apparently, he's a very good coach. And secondly, he's a good coach. Uh, He definitely has some ability coaching-wise. And he is one of the reasons why uh, our youth development... Uh, side of things is actually going well. I think some of the young players have uh, given him credit for helping their development because he used to work with the uh, the youth players. Uh, you know, thirdly, McPeak did get us up to the Premiership through the playoffs. And yes, that Kilmarnock team were absolutely terrible. And so yeah, I mean, a lot of teams could have beaten that Kilmarnock team. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it, it is impressive. We got up. I mean, yes, uh, it was a complete failure in the end because we got relegated. But yeah, we, we got up and he deserves credit for that. Uh, you know, it's an achievement. It's definitely an achievement, even though, like, that season we were bad uh, in the championship. I mean, there were, there were, like, a few runs where we were actually quite bad. Like, we well, actually were bad, uh, you know, that season. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, you say to yourself, oh, we, we were lucky to get up. But on the other hand, I mean, there's no such thing as luck really in football because, I mean, football, it's about results. And Dundee, I mean, we got up through the playoffs and, and we managed to get in the playoffs in the first place. But you can't deny that that season in the championship, uh, we were poor. Uh, we were poor at several points. And that Kamalik team was just disgraceful, really. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. But yeah, you have to give McPick credit for that. Uh, fourthly, uh, yeah, we, we did have some good games under him, definitely. We did put in some good performances. Uh, so that's another good point in his fav- favour. Uh, you know, fifthly, he, uh, he clearly loves the club. He actually took the time to learn about the club's history. Because I remember... Uh, apparently he was interviewed and he started talking about uh, you know 1970s uh, statistics uh, so he actually took the time to learn about Dundee in the 70s uh, that that shows uh, dedication and so I like that about him that that he really uh, bought into the club and he, be- he became one of us in a way I, I, I love that about McPake and uh, yeah, that's another thing I like about him. Then I think he paid into the foundation, which is another good thing. I mean, I don't think a lot of managers would have done that. And yes, I mean, Big Pick was uh, on good money, uh, you know, because you know, the, like at that level, you tend to be on on good money if you're a manager of a championship team and, and you're at a team like Dundee. And Dundee is relatively speaking a big club, and so yeah, so it's kind of a very small gesture, but still. Uh, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was a really good thing to do. Uh, so that's another thing I like about McPeak. Uh, and, uh, you know, fifthly, you know, he was a young manager. And I think he uh, I think he handled the uh, the pressure quite well. I mean, yes, we, we uh, yes, overall, I don't think he was a good manager. But he was under a lot of pressure. And I think he handled it well. And, yes, that didn't translate into results on... Uh, on the pitch, but I, I do think that is praiseworthy, just as a general character quality. You know, some people will be saying, oh, that's a lot of rubbish, you know, it's a football is a results-based game, and I agree, but at the same time, I do like that about McPake. You know, being a very young manager and at a club like Dundee, I mean, the first job is at a club like Dundee that is, rel- you know, relatively speaking, a big club, and, uh, yeah, I he, he think he handled it quite well, you know, all that pressure and all the expectations, uh, but then again, if you're a manager, you're, you're supposed to do that, like, uh, you're supposed to have quite a strong character, or you won't succeed in management, so you have that side of things too, uh, but overall, I don't think he was a good manager, I think he, I think his uh, recruitment policy left a lot to be desired, and that's putting it very mildly, 
I think he signed too many ageing players. I think his signings were uninspiring, unimaginative. Uh, I think so, some of the players he signed, he you know he was friends with them, he knew them, and obviously that's part of football. You, you have connections and, and you use your connections, but I, I do think it was it was taking the piss a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, like was it? Was that he he played with uh, Fontaine and Forster at, at Hibs and then he brought them uh, to the club. I mean, uh, and then you know like uh, playing McGowan all the time, even though I don't think McGowan, uh, you know, always deserved to be in the starting lineup. But he he's mates with McGowan because he, they played together. Uh, I remember a time when McPeak used to give uh, McGowan lifts home uh, when McGowan had a a tag on his uh, on his leg. When he got in trouble with the police, uh, so I, I don't like that. I, I, I don't like that. I, and I think he, he kept too many players. Uh, when we got promoted, he kept too many players, and it's not good. I mean, when Harley uh, was manager, he got rid of you know a lot of players. Like, like uh, I remember Christian Nardi. I mean, I, I didn't like the the fact that we signed him. I thought he was going to be uh, another dud. But he, you know, he ended up being a good player, and I thought that he should have been kept on for at least another uh, year. But Hartley got rid of him, and I remember thinking that was ruthless. I would have kept him, uh, but Hartley turned out to be right because you know, the season we came up, we uh, we finished in the top six, which was an amazing achievement. So Hartley was ruthless. He he got rid of players who he knew weren't good enough. And I, another one, uh, Nicky Riley. I loved Nicky Riley. He's one of my all-time favourite Dundee players, and, and you know if it wasn't for injuries, I think he could have been you know a top top player. You know at least in Scottish football terms, I think he could have been a top top player. I love Nicky Riley. Uh, it's just injuries, uh, you know, got the better of him. But he was a, a, a you know one of the best players I've ever seen play for Dundee as Nicky Riley, and I know a lot of Dundee fans will criticise me for saying that, but I really rated Nicky Riley. I thought he was a, a really good player. Just this injury problems, but I remember I I thought Nicky Riley should stay at the club, and then and he did stay initially after they got promoted to the Premiership, but Hartley then got rid of him, and so I remember, uh, yeah, yeah, and that's what you have to do. Obviously, you have the argument about squad cohesion and keeping the same group of players, and and there's and that's true, but at the same time, if the group of players isn't good enough, you have to get rid of players and. I remember McPeak said that he, he said that uh, you know it was wrong the the massive turnover of playing staff and that was true there was a massive turnover of uh, playing staff I remember like with McCann and, and you know like McIntyre it was like we had a, a new squad every single season and even uh, two different squads in the same season because I remember McIntyre got rid of a lot of McCann's players and he signed like a whole new team essentially. I remember McPeak coming out and saying, "Well, that's not good," but I do think McPeak went a bit too far because he he kept he kept players who weren't actually that great in the championship, and uh, that was that was the wrong move. He sh- he should have been more ruthless, and he should have brought in quality, and that's how we we got relegated. And so as rec- I don't like his recruitment policy. Uh, I think he was very, very stubborn. I don't think he learned from his mistakes. I mean, the fans, I mean, fans could be fickle. Fans could get things wrong. That's true. But, you know, the fans were seeing things and it was like, you know, did McPeak see it or was he just stubborn? Like, like I remember just some of the, the things he would do. Like, uh, he, was, he was just very, very stubborn and he refused to learn and that was part of his downfall. Uh, you know, he... he and yeah, I just that's one thing I didn't like about McPeak was uh, how stubborn he was. He he didn't seem to adapt to uh, other teams. He just insisted on playing the the, the same same way. Uh, I just thought it was uh, I just thought it was uh, that's, that's not management. As a manager, you have to adapt. Uh, you you have to if you want to do well, you have to adapt. And if that means getting rid of a style you like, then so be it. I mean. I mean, and I think McPeak was too stubborn. He just didn't learn from his mistakes. So I didn't like that about uh, about McPeak. I uh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, yeah. He was uh, overall. I would say he was a, a poor manager. But there, there are definitely good things about him, though. And I hope he does well at Dunfermline. I really do. Uh, apart from when they're playing against Dundee, obviously. Uh, 
or competing against Dundee in some way. But yeah, I just I was yeah, that's the thing about McPeak. He's he's very very stubborn. Uh, I think the whole uh, Cummings situation was just a disaster because uh, I think Cummings uh, should have done a lot more at Dundee. And yes, uh, apparently he turned up at training pissed. Uh, that, there's no excuse for that. If you're a professional footballer, there's no excuse for that. But at the same time, I think he should have been starting a lot more. And I think we wasted uh, Jason Cummings. I think I think we should, shouldn't have got rid of him. And, and you know what? I think he's doing quite well in Australia. And then he had the whole, was it Adam, uh, was it Adam Johnson? Or Johnston, remember he, he uh, used to play for I think Motherwell and we brought him to the club. And he was actually scoring goals and yet he found himself on the bench. <coughs> Excuse me, he, he found himself on the bench even though he was actually scoring goals. And apparently the rumour was that he was a, a very, very arrogant person off the field. Like, apparently full of himself. But at the same time... He's scoring goals and you have him on the bench and then, um, you know, and you know he moved on. He went to a team in England and he was banging in the goals for that team in England. I forget the, the name of the team, but he was banging them in, like really banging them in. And it's like, it's like, what's going on here? Why are we getting rid of players who are actually good players? And, uh, and that goes down to uh, McPeak. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I just... I just uh, Things like that, I I uh, don't like. Uh, yeah, I, I do think that. I do think in some ways he was a bit, uh, a bit like, maybe maybe I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right way to put it. But yeah, fool of himself. In some ways, a bit fool of himself because, you know, it's like after he was a uh, manager, he was like saying things on uh, Twitter, you know, defending Paul. McGowan and Paul McGowan is one of my all-time favourite uh, Dundee players. I th- I think he should get a testimonial, and I know that he's not the player he was. I don't think he should be starting every week. I mean, I I, th- I think he's a very very good uh, backup and squad player to have. And I think he's a a good option to have on the bench, and I, I hope he gets his testimonial. He is a you know I I love Paul McGowan. But uh, yeah, he was uh, McPeak went on Twitter and was uh, saying all these things about Paul McGowan, and the fans were uh, pointing out things to him. And uh, yeah, just again, it just shows that McPeak could be very, very stubborn. And sometimes that can work. Sometimes it's a good thing to be stubborn, because there are times when a manager actually knows what he is doing, and even if it doesn't make much sense to the people around him, he knows what he is doing. And he sticks to it, and it actually turns out really well. Uh, so, in certain cases, it's good to be stubborn, but in other cases, it could be your downfall because it's just it's just like just you're just failing to adapt. You're failing to be pragmatic, and that same thing happened. With Neil McCann. Neil McCann insisted on playing this kind of you know very very technical, or very very fancy. Uh, style of football but the problem was it doesn't really work in the Scottish game it doesn't really work well against Scottish teams that play in a very very Scottish kind of way and he didn't have the quality in the team to actually do it I mean uh, he did sign players who were technically gifted but the problem was the players just weren't that good like yes technically gifted but they weren't that good and uh, yeah, I just I, I I was the problem with McCann. I mean, other teams knew how to play against his style of play. Uh, they knew what to do. And it was so easy to play against, and McCann still insisted on playing the same way. Now McCann's a lot more stubborn than McPeak, but McPeak was also stubborn. That was part of his downfall. And uh, I mean, the good thing about Paul Hartley was Paul Hartley could be quite pragmatic. He would change things, uh, you know, in order to adapt to the other team. But but with uh, you know McCann and McPeak, he didn't see that. He didn't see that. They just insisted on doing the same things and refusing to learn from their mistakes. And at that point, it becomes uh, just arrogance. And I remember was that you have to. You hear the Einstein quote all the time, oh, Madness is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And it's a cliche, but there's some truth to it. Actually, there's a lot of truth to it. 
And that's, that's the problem we've had with some of our managers the last few years. They, they keep doing the same things and they expect different results. And that, that was that was life with McPake. He would come out with a team and they would be awful in the first half. And then in the second half he would change it and they played a lot better in the second half. And you just you were just like watching it and you said to yourself, why couldn't you have just played that way uh, from the very beginning? Like, why did you play an unsuitable, uh, you know, formation, an unsuitable uh, style of play? Why did you play that in the first half? And we find ourselves a few goals down or a goal down. Why, why did you do that? Why couldn't you just, you know, had... Uh, things the way you had them in the second half from the very beginning before a ball was even kicked. It was like he was sabotaging uh, his own team. As that's what would happen. He, he would change things in the second half and he, Dundee would actually be playing a lot better. But he could have done that from the very beginning. And so you would you would think, oh, uh, the way he had the team in the second half, he'll, you know, he'll have the team that way uh, for you know the foreseeable uh, future because it worked. But yet, yet you look at the you would look at the team, uh, you know before three o'clock, uh, and you would uh, you would just uh, he'd, he'd just do the same thing he did before and and so what would happen is you know horrible first half they would find themselves a goal down or a few goals down, he would change it second half, to and they would actually do well in the second half and they would maybe score a goal. Uh, but yeah, but by that point it would be too late. But but it's like, why didn't you just do that from the very beginning? That, that was another problem with McPake. He, he would he would adapt, but it was always too late in the game. And then the next week he would just go back to the same old ways, and it was so frustrating to to watch. The fans knew it. The fans knew it. And uh, yeah, I was, I was, again, a, a part of it is just stubbornness. Like it's like it's like when modern uh, coaches and modern managers. It's like when they go and get their uh, you know like their education and their their training and things, and they get their badges. It's like they're told to play in a certain way, and they can't deviate uh, from that you know particular way of playing. As I think that's I think that's what is uh, again. I've never done coaching badges, and I don't think I'll ever become a coach. Uh, definitely not, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's just like it's like they're told that it's better to play in a particular way, and they just they refuse to 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 yeah, they they refuse to rebel against it. Uh, that, that seems to be what happens with younger coaches, younger managers. It's not always good. It's, it really isn't always good. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, McPake, some great things about him, but overall a poor manager. But I wish him all the best. You know, I, I Dundee fans should still have him in a very high regard. He did do a lot for the club. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this podcast.